Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Cloud Surfer Tom. Thank you for joining me today. Um so today I'm gonna be looking at Final Fantasy fourteen and giving some beginners tips, uh things to do, things not to do and things to look out for. Um the game is so vast and there's so much you can do, so many different activities. Uh it can feel e easy to get lost or to miss things. I for one have been a level 80 character, my first level 80 character and have got told about this thing that I missed and it turned out it would have been very helpful in levelling my primary job so it's very easy to do and no matter who you speak to they've all done some of these at some point you know so um, that's why I thought it was a good idea to sort of you know like present some of these and let you know what the trappings are, what you can sort of avoid if you're careful and stuff like that. So I hope some of these these are useful to people um, and if you have any further questions on them feel free to drop a, drop me a comment and I'll get back to you and um, I'm happy to help wherever possible. So before I get into it I just want to say a little bit about my channel and sort of where it's going. Um, I've said previously I'm primarily going to be looking at JRPGs um, because it's something that I'm very passionate about. There's so much coming in the next year, uh, so much that I've played in the past that I'm very excited to talk about. Um, so please if you are into J JRPGs please stick around, give me a like and subscribe and hopefully share my channel around. I'd like to do this more permanently full time because uh, it's something that again I am very passionate about. So please stick with me and I'll try to create some content that that is useful and that you can like. So. Race and gender. So race, race and gender have no uh, effects on gameplay. It won't affect, affect the way that you play the game. Um, they are purely cosmetic. The There are a few exceptions um, in the sense of Viera who can't wear helmets and Aura who can't wear helmets because they have horns or, or uh, bunny ears um, but aside from that it doesn't affect gameplay uh, the other thing worth note here is that um, aesthetically things can be changed so if you select the Aura you think oh that's a badass character so the uh, Viera is a really badass character um, this stuff can be changed, and she agrees. <laughs> um, th yeah, you can change when you get into the game. Uh, the f there is a free way of doing it. Um, I believe there's two along the journey of um, a realm reborn. Firstly, when you get to 30 days sub, you get um, a something called a potion of Fantasia. When you take this potion, it logs you out, and then lo when you log back in, it logs you back into the character creation screen, and you can change um, your race and gender and appearance through that. You get another one for completing a Realm Reborn. Um, any further changes after that, you can buy more fanta potions of Fantasia from the Mog Station store. Beginner classes. Choosing a beginner class might seem like a daunting task at first um, because this is the way that you interact with the game. You might always have been a sword and board type player in every game that you've ever played. So you choose the gladiator because you know that that's the um, gameplay that you're going to enjoy. And then you get in there and you don't actually enjoy it. It's not something that you are, that is resonating with you. Do you now have to change your character? Do you now have to go back and start again? Even though you might have settled on a character appearance that you really did enjoy. Well, no you don't. So once you get to level 10 in your starting area, um, the world becomes a bit more open. You can choose travel to any of the other starting areas. Um, so now you can go and hunt down the different class to try out. And what I really like about Final Fantasy is that they give you the freedom of being able to switch between these classes on 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 the fly. Um, I currently have 
nearly every every job leveled up to level 70 and some up to level 80 because I <laughs> can't decide which class I, uh, which job I like best so for somebody that um, really wants to get in there and try all the different um, jobs then this is definitely um, a really good aspect of the game it just enables you to know that like oh I can select I've never tried a puggy list before so I'm gonna give that a go now and go into it try the opening section of the game and I, I don't like that and I can switch I think it's also important to point out that um, these classes have different starting areas so for the um, for the marauder and the arcanist they start at Limsa, Lim, Limsa, Lominza. Whereas the Conjurer, the Lancer, and the Archer start at Gadania. And the Frumitage and the Pugilist, they start at Uldar. This is important because if you are wanting to play with a friend in the opening hours of the game, um, if you choose the wrong class starting uh, starting area, you're not going to be able to play with each other until you get to level 10. Um, so, it, like, if you're going into this to want to play with a friend, that's a consideration that's worth worth keep keeping in mind. So you're in the game, and this big open world has just become available to you. Now what? It's generally advised in the opening hours of the game to follow a uh, main story quest, at least until you unlock travel to other destinations. Um, that way you can, if you did choose, a, you really wanted to be the Lancer but your friend is playing in Alder, uh, Uldar, sorry, and you started in Gadania. Um, at least unlocking fast travel will make it so that you can go and join your friend and you can meet up with your friend and play. But it's generally advised to follow the main story quest um, at least up until um, level 30 where you unlock grand companies and uh, your mount. Because there is so much to do in this game. Like, there is so many different options. Like you, you might have come into this game not wanting to do a combat class. You might want to go into gathering or crafting. Um, and you don't for that you don't really need to follow the main story quest past unlocking the other destinations because once you do that you can go and unlock the botanist or you can go and unlock the miner um, but if you are wanting to follow like the natural progression of the game with a combat class do the main story quest you get a good amount of XP for doing so um, and you unlock other features of the game so as you rank, uh, as you level up and go through the main story quest, you unlock your dungeons at particular levels. Um, once you get to level 50, you unlock the daily roulettes, which are what the meat of what us daily uh, daily players do now. We do our daily roulettes, and that's a good source of leveling up. Um, so like wanting to get the a, a, a Realm Reborn story campaign finished first um, would be a good idea with your primary class because you're going to unlock a load of features that um, you won't have access to at level 30. Um, but if you are just looking at getting into the game and just having an experiment, having a play around, um, obviously this should all be done at your own pace and with your own goals in mind. Um, but there's a few things that are helpful at around level 20 you unlock access to your grand company um, th this varies depending on your starting area so for Limsa Luminza um, you st the grand company is called the Maelstrom if you start in Gadania it's the Order of the Twin Adder and for uh, Uldar it's the Immortal Flames so you'll join up this by following through on the main story quest and this unlocks a number of features so 
um, mainly the currency that you'll want to farm is from fates and that currency can be spent here getting various um, items like weapons and um, armor uh, materials so you can cut farm seals to buy these materials and you can also use those seals to rank up your uh, rank within the golden company as you rank up you unlock uh, further things so you'll unlock higher levels on in the seal exchange so you can get better gear higher level gear um, and different materials but also you unlock different features like um, hunts, clan hunts, uh, where a bill is posted and you'll go out into the world and hunt various monsters which paid allied seals and then you can buy other items which are cool. Um, so there's that. And you also, um, I'm not sure on the ranks because it's been so long since I've done it, but um, later into the ranks further down the ranking list you'll unlock something called squadrons where you form a team and send them out on like, missions um, and you also unlock something uh, a trust sort of system where you can take these npcs into a dungeon with you so if you wanted to practice with some uh, a tank for instance or a healer but you're worried about doing that with other people um, making yourself look stupid or something um, then this is a good way to practice so that's another thing that you can use your allied seals for but primarily unlocking your grand company uh, one of the most important aspects of it leads to unlocking your chocobo at level 30 um, when you reach level 30 a quest will be unlocked called my little chocobo um, and that's how you get your mount so that's very important um, because obviously that helps you to move around the world quicker once you've unlocked your mount as well uh, another really good thing to do I would highly recommend doing it as soon as you can is another quest called my feisty little chocobo which I believe is picked up in southern fanland um, I believe it's southern fanland but this unlocks a uh, companion that you can take into battle with you. Uh, doing this earlier rather than later is good because the more XP that you uh, give your companion, the quicker he'll rank up to rank 20. Um, and you can set him as an attacker, a tank or a healer. So for doing solo content, if you are a DPS or a tank, doing so solo content and having your companion as a healer is really really useful and still something that I use. Leveling classes. So there are many ways to level and what primarily people will tell you again like I said about the main story quest is if you're running your first character do the main story. Um, it can't be stated enough and you, I'm not the only person that will tell you um, follow the main story quest you get a good amount of XP for doing it but you also unlock other features like uh, higher level dungeons and trials and then when you get to your um, your soft cap levels at level 50 level 60 level 70 and then finally le level 80 you learn a lot of different roulettes um, which give you a massive daily boost on leveling but there are other ways to level too so you could do uh, you could farm fates so um, in world events that uh, can be taken on by anybody and obviously providing you uh, at the right level um, you can do that and it, you just get tasked with an objective killing so many mobs or kill a particular sort of tough enemy and you get XP for doing that one way that I like to farm so if you're farming an alternate character once you've finished the main story um, obviously you don't get that story experience again um, the highest level dungeon 
and while you're waiting for the dungeon farm fit um, because playing this game like playing this game effectively is about maximizing your time like how you're using your time efficiently to me anyway so as I say I like to farm fates while I'm um, waiting for a queue queue times can be varied depending on what class you're running so for healers healers get a really good queue time because they're in demand uh, tanks uh, have got a medium queue time you'll find that you queue for a little bit but not exceptionally long and uh, DPS tends to have the longest queue times um, so for a DPS class it's very much about maximizing efficiency and using that time effectively so uh, as I say, I like to use fates to farm in between dungeons. Um, another way of doing it, you could do your side quests, but again, it, it really all depends on what what you want to do. Um, you've got these various options that you can choose to to use, and it's what you find interesting, really, and what breaks the tedium. Um, because dungeons do take time, waiting for dungeons can take time. So it's what you want to do in the m in in that time between that will hold your interest. Um, so yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, like highest level dungeons. So if you're at level 34 and you've just lo unlocked the 34 dungeon, run that uh, and in between fate farm. Another really good leveling method is uh, something called the Palace of the Dead uh, which covers level 1 to 50 um, and you can also do Heaven on High um, which covers 60 plus. Um, so basically Palace of the Dead is um, a different type of experience from the usual dungeon grind. You um, are transported into a randomly generated dungeon and you go through floors, um, you like climb floors basically and clear out waves of enemies within there. There's uh, various mechanisms within there too like traps and it has its own sort of loot system that will drop um, things that will enhance you in certain ways. Um, what's really interesting about it is it has its own leveling system so when you go in you start at level 1 and you work up to level 60 um, when you come back out you're back to the level you were before plus experience from uh, within the game and every 10 levels you come out with new experience so people use this as a great farming method for leveling alternate characters once you've not got the main story to rely on. You can start the Palace of the Dead by um, accepting the quest. I believe it's called the House that the Dead Built or something like that. It's from New Gadania in the inn. So I've presented uh, a a number of tips that I think are useful um, in getting started when you enter into this world, um, where to go and what to do. I just want to give some like final tips on little bits of information that I wish I'd known back then um, when I first started. Um, so I'm just going to sort of list them in no particular order really. So starting with leveling, um, after you've leveled up your main class Anything under that class, anything leveled under, um, so if you've got like a level 80 class and then you go to level a new class, say like an archer, um, every class under your main receives an armory bonus, um, which I think is 100% extra XP. So that's all like helpful for leveling um, like alternate characters, alternate classes. Um, another good tip with leveling is whenever you log off, log off in a settlement um, or in a city or something like that because you gain a rested bonus. You can see my XP bar down at the bottom down here has um, this like 
sorry, orange section here. This is my rested bonus. So while I've been off, I've been accruing bonus XP. Um, you'll know that you are in a rested place because you'll see this little moon thing down here. If you come out of a settlement, you won't get the rested bonus. So whenever you log off, make sure that you are um, logging off within the settlement. Um, and another really good tip for uh, uh, leveling to maximise your bonus XP is to uh, use food items. These are also good for, if you're a DPS class, maximising DPS if you are using the right type of food. Um, they usually have three or four different things on it that it'll maximise, so this one maximises determination by 8% and these last for 30 minutes. These can stack up to two times as well, um, as long as you're using the same item. So you could use it once and then use it again and then you've got 60, mi uh, 60 minutes of bonus XP. So that's a really good, like, useful thing to get in, get into um, when you're like going into dungeons and stuff. You only gain three percent XP bonus, but when you consider going up to the higher levels and you're getting three million XP for a leveling roulette, three percent on top of that, it's a, a a decent chunk of XP. So definitely do that as well. Um. I also just want to take a quick moment to explain a little bit about the gear. So, gearing has different tiers. So you've got your normal tier, which is sort of just this with the grey background. And then there's dungeon items. These only drop do drop from dungeons, and they, they tend to have higher stats. So you can see here that um, this like Lakeland Blade, it's a dungeon drop. and if you compare that to a level 71 sword for the samurai, it'll have more stats than the base version. So uh, when you're going through dungeons and something green drops, they're actually in a realm reborn up to level 50. They have a pink background, but after that they have a green background. Um, and then we have these ones here, which have the little like shiny thing at the top. They're high quality items, so they tend to have um, again increased stats than than the base version of it. So you can sort of see there. There's a good example. I mean, yeah, yeah. So they're the same level. So that's le level 29, and you get craftsmanship of 56. But going up to the high quality version, I get a craftsmanship of 64. So you can see there, like, people go for high quality versions. Uh, these can be crafted through high quality materials that you can source from various locations, or uh, you can buy them from the market board, although they're very expensive. Um, that's why I would recommend also joining uh, an FC, because FCs tend to have crafters that have maximize their craft and they may be able to help you out providing that you can get them the materials or give them the gill and then they source it for you so so if that's a tip within itself joining an FC because it really helps um, and one thing I'd like to say about this game the community as a whole are fantastic people are willing to help they're happy to help and if you are stuck ask because you will find somebody. There's various chat commands that you can go to. You can um, go to yell. So if you are in a city like Limsa, if you go to shout and ask for some help, you know, like people, somebody will come to you, will help you. And <coughs> lastly, I just want to mention about quest icons. Uh, I said earlier on that main story quest unlocks uh, access to other other things, other activities, other sort of events that are important to you as you level up uh, and, and as you go through the crafting quest. So if I just go to journal quickly, I'll just show you. Um, So you can see in here, I've already completed all the main story quests, but what you'll see 
if you can see up the top left hand side this is what the main main story quest looks like so if you see that on the map like you see this here um, that's just like a side quest but if you see that that's showing you where the next part of the main story quest is to go um, you'll see obviously that is your side quests and then these blue ones here this is indicating that something new is to be unlocked so if you do do that um, if you come across one of these and complete it you'll unlock a new event that could be leaves uh, guild hests all sorts of stuff really so um, definitely look out for them the other variations on that this is a repeatable quest so uh, you tend to find these uh, on like beast tribes the, uh, they may have like a daily cap or a daily limit but you can repeat these quests um, these are class quests oh something that I didn't mention before was something that is really important every five levels in your class um, you unlock a new job quest now it's really important that you do these they give you good XP they give you gear for your um, your chosen class and they can unlock abilities as well so certain abilities might be tied behind a job quest so it's important to keep up with keep up with your, your, your quests every five levels and then at level 30 you unlock your job quest so I showed you the beginner classes earlier on um, so your Lancer for instance well you can see it, mine's not a Lancer anymore mine's the Dragoon when you get to level 30 you unlock a class class quest that unlocks the job element to your quest so definitely um, keep up with your your class quests cause they're very important in locking in unlocking abilities and like other things like that so um, and I, I think that's that's it for now really uh, there will be other stuff to cover at some point but I will uh, so collect <laughs> some information and get back to you there is like one thing that I do want to talk to you about um, in setting up sort of hot bars and setting up your um, your controller like there are loads and loads of options but I'm going to do a separate video on that because you can get really in depth with it um, you can see just from looking at my hood how many different things I've got here so this is the cross hot bar and then there's an, uh, an extended cross hot bar that you can set and then so if I double tap left trigger it'll go over to my left side of the extended cross hot bar but if I hold left trigger and right trigger it opens another bar so you can set these to different hot bars um, so you've got access to different abilities but I'll go into more detail with that um, in a in a separate video because like I said there's a lot of um, information to go through and a lot of different customization options um, and just finally just something that's come to me um, there is such a thing as a novice network which you can join up to level 50 I believe and I'm not sure if it's invite only or if you can find it from the menus but that might be worth something to consider because it's either mentors that have been around in the game for a long time and they'll sort of take you under their wing and help you through it through the early early stages of the game or there's other like-minded people like yourself that are just getting into the game um, and you can share your findings share what you think is working for you and it's a really good place um, alongside the novice network comes the there's a novice quest line you can see these on um, like you see there like that is the novice um, quest so you can go there with your particular class uh, again if you want to say try a healer but you're intimidated by it go to this area there's one one of these in most of the like opening there's the opening cities and then they're dotted around the maps as well but here's like confirmation that there's definitely one here in quarry mill um, so you go there and it puts you through a series of scenarios and teaches you a little bit about the job um, and you get like some decent gear for doing it and just come to me as well you get a ring that 
provides you 30% is it 30% XP bonus up to level 30 so that's definitely worth doing that as well because um, remember that you're not just potentially using that for your main class you can use that ring for every single class that you you do so it's definitely worth considering doing the novice uh, quest line as well um, and with that I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover today uh, sorry for a the long video but I think it's important and um, there's plenty to cover this game can be really overwhelming uh, at times so um, I hope I've provided a bit of a guide on how to settle into it and please 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 if you found this useful please like and share it um, and subscribe uh, I'm like I said in, at the start of my video, I'm going to be doing a lot more of content like this. Um, and if you have any suggestions, please uh, put them down in the comments and I'll uh, see what I can do about that. So, thank you for being here with me today and thank you for watching to the end. And I'll see you again soon, guys. Thank you very much.